gambling on our futures, big data, global finance, and digital life. If impact investing becomes business as usual, the future will be a much different place. Judith Roden, president of the Rockefeller Foundation, 2005 to 2017. And what does this future look like? Well, this is Morgan. Morgan the financier has more money than he knows what to do with. Morgan must keep his money circulating to extract more money from the economic system. Morgan and his friends wrecked the housing market and world economy, were bailed out by the federal government, and then proceeded to create new predatory financial instruments to keep their capital moving. They gathered in Bellagio, Italy, as the housing market was on the brink of collapse, and with guidance from the Rockefeller Foundation, crafted a vision for new investment markets. These new markets were built on exploiting the misery of 4 billion people at what they refer to as the bottom of the economic pyramid. After decades of neoliberal disinvestment in public enterprises and infrastructure, Morgan and his friends were ready to take them over. They developed new dehumanizing proposals to extract private profit from the global poor. The Global Impact Investment Network, or GIIN, created in 2009 led the effort, and in 2015, revisions in tax law allowed foundations to use their endowment funds for social impact investing without penalty, unleashing a flood of capital to seed these new markets. Thus, social impact investing was created for these purposes, sweeping the globe as a new tool of innovative finance. Social impact bonds, or SIBs, were created to carry out the plan. SIBs allow private investors to milk profit from public programs based on their own projections of reduced government expenditures in the future. To do this, governments issue payments when programs meet predetermined metrics of success, which are narrow by design. Successful programs are designated evidence-based and scaled. For that reason, profit-driven and surveillance-based data collection and monitoring is central to this enterprise. Careful structuring of deals and manipulation of data also comes into play. What tools are used to identify those who are at risk? Who is permitted? Who is excluded? What data is weighed or ignored when determining success? Evaluators have a stake in seeing the system operate unimpeded and may be inclined to look the other way or bias their methods as the deck is stacked in the investor's favor. It may take years before a return on a SIB investment is realized, but bundling the debt that SIBs represent transforms them into liquid securities that are immediately available for high-frequency trading. The level of risk associated with these derivatives fluctuates as data flows through digital platforms that are linked to public service delivery. As bets and counterbets are made by elite financial investors, the future prospects of real people are woven into the oppressive operations of global financial markets. Human potential is subsumed within a colossal machine designed to profit from suffering. Desperate gaps in public funding for public services predispose government employees to sign on to these predatory public-private partnerships. Programs struggle under bare-bones budgets, and as frustrations with broken-on-purpose systems mount, Morgan is right there, pitching SIBs as a cost-effective fix, one that not coincidentally shifts public sector funds into the hands of global finance. The scheme that is pay for success allows Morgan and his friends to claim they're doing well by doing good, while their government collaborators say, we're just paying for what works. All public service delivery is redesigned and constrained to extract the profit-generating data that the financiers demand. Data-driven approaches and investor interests are prioritized over relationship-centered care by legislative decree, which leads to human lives dominated and constrained by invisible algorithms manipulated by their devices without any appeal to human judgment. And people like Mia, who rely on public services, become, in essence, financial instruments mined for their data. Sensitive, personal data, stored in the cloud and vulnerable to fraud and hacking. Mia's toddler, Lena, goes to a pay-for-success controlled preschool, a free universal pre-K program, where most of the instruction is delivered through an iPad. 
Her older daughter, Mara, struggles with reading. She can only advance her education through an online learning program, and if she doesn't increase her scores, she won't be able to go on to the fourth grade. Mia's community is home to many new immigrants. The school is piloting a pay-for-success online learning system designed for English language learners. But there hasn't been an ESOL teacher in the school for two years. Mia's aunt, Anna, is required to wear a Fitbit as part of a pay-for-success diabetes prevention program in order to qualify for affordable medical care. Mia sends her incarcerated brother, Mark, money each month to rent an iPad through a pay-for-success program, and after he logs enough time on the online education and behavioral therapy system, he can watch a movie. Mia's next-door neighbor, Bill, a veteran with post-traumatic stress disorder, can only get access to counseling through a pay-for-success teletherapy program that involves texting, Skype, and virtual reality. If he fails to engage with the program, his benefits may be cut. Her other neighbor, Justine, is expecting a baby, and the pay-for-success home visit nurse collects extensive information about her family life on a tablet during each visit. Pay-for-success monitoring expands the state surveillance mechanisms that target communities of color for intervention, like broken windows policing. Predictive policing programs will intensify and automate this control infrastructure using smart city technology and Internet of Things sensors to track individuals identified as future troublemakers. Social impact bonds to reduce prison recidivism will target black, brown, and low-income people for more incarceration. Vendors and financiers will cash in on quote-unquote evidence-based behavioral interventions designed to fix community members who have been involved with the criminal justice system. When students spend much of their school day using iPads and Chromebooks, they become socially isolated and behavior problems worsen. Data analytics, social-emotional profiling, and intrusive school-based policing will push even more children into the prison industrial complex. Data analysis partners that have ties to the Department of Homeland Security, like Palantir, which services the Santa Clara County Homelessness SIB, pose a special danger to immigrant communities who will be discouraged from using vital services. In this future, accessing essential services will mean we must first agree to ongoing surveillance and compliance. Will public needs only be addressed if they can feed insatiable financial markets and readily offer up data to service innovative financial instruments? Will we allow public services, including our schools, to be digitized by self-interested investors? And how likely is it that savvy impact investors will adopt a casino capitalist strategy, taking out credit default swaps on the whole rotten system right before it implodes? We are already living in a world where machine learning, big data, and predictive analytics are poised to limit our lives in unimaginable ways. The most powerful interests in the world created this social impact investment landscape, working to subvert democratic control of government power at every level. This market-driven landscape benefits Morgan, his billionaire friends, and the lawyers who create the deals, the consultants that evaluate them, the politicians who legislate them into place, the tech industry managing the devices, software, and cloud-based computing, the telecommunications companies that operate the data infrastructure, and the mega nonprofits run by super wealthy investors that deliver the outsourced public services. Billionaires like Morgan intend to keep getting richer, and the misery of people like Mia and those in her community is a fine way to do it. When pay-for-success and social impact bonds show up in your community, know that this is the future that is currently being created. We must be prepared to fight them. In 2013, the Harvard Business Review said, social impact investing will be the new venture capital. Venture capital fueled the privatization of public education. Social impact investing will take it to a whole new level.